Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video, we're going to be fixing a little problem in our mesh class. You see, the way we're drawing things right now is we're specifying vertices, and we're just connecting them in a triangle. So for example, I could specify a vertice, say, here, then over here, and then over over here, and we draw a triangle between them. And that's great and all, but the problem with this approach is it doesn't allow you to reuse vertices. For example, let's say I want to draw a square. First I specify this triangle, so this vertice, this vertex, oh, this vertex, and this vertex. Then I need to specify the next four, so this vertex again, this vertex, and then this vertex again. There's redundant vertices there. I have to have the same data twice just to draw a new shape. And it only gets worse when you get more complicated measures, like even just a cube. That only has eight unique vertices, but I need to specify, I believe, 24 vertices, so in other words, three of each vertice, in order to actually draw a cube. And that's just inefficient. So in this video, we're going to be adding the concept of a face to the mesh, and we're going to be drawing based on that rather than based on our vertices. So with that all out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. So in order to do this, I'm going to create a private int IBO. And this is something called an index buffer object. Like, it's kind of like how a vertex buffer object is just essentially an array of vertices on the graphics card. This is sort of like an array of integers on the graphics card. And that's essentially what an IBO is. And we set it to GeoGen buffers to get it to a valid location. And the way I'm going to use this is every three of these, well, every three of the integers I put in here are going to be sort of indexes of the vertex. So, for example, if I have a vertex, say, this is vertex A, B, C, and D, and I want to draw a square, I might say, okay, index 1, 2, and 3, then index 2, 3, and 4, so that I could reuse the vertices. That's sort of how it's going to work. It's me it makes a lot more sense once you actually see the code using it. So yeah, now, now that we actually have that created, we have to change our add vertices method, because we don't want just vertices now. We also want indices to specify which indexes are actually going to be drawn. So, of course, I'm going to have this new int array here, and I'm also going to need to add create a new buffer here. So I'm going to bind buffer. It's a gl, whoops, gl element array buffer. That's what the type of the IBO is. IBO. So now I'm binding the IBO. Any operation is on the IBO. And I'm going to buffer the data, which is going to be a buffer of indices. And this is going to be a problem because I don't have a utility method for creating a, flip buffer, a flipped buffer of integers. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go to util, and first off, I'm going to create a new method like this, except it's going to be instead of a float buffer, an int buffer, called create int buffer. And it's going to return buffer utils .create int buffer of that size. And I need to import this. And other than that, I actually don't have that method. Interesting. I thought I created that, but all right. Oh well, I'll, I guess I'll create that method where I need it, but yeah, I'm going to create an int buffer called create flipped buffer. I'm going to take in some int values, not int is values, int values. And there. So, first off, it's pretty much like everything I've done before. I'm going to create a new int buffer of values.length, and that should be correct. Then, now that I have the buffer created, I'm going to put all the data in the buffer. And not buffers, buffer. Jeez, I can't type today. And finally, buffer.flip, so all the data is in the proper order. And then just return buffer. And there we go. So that should get me the completed, well, the new way of adding vertices. So now I should have all my vert, I should have all my vertices in the proper order or now. I should have all the data there. So, really, now all I have to do is change the draw method in order to actually use this IBO that we've just spent this time creating.
Fortunately, there's really not that much we need to do to the draw method. First off, we need to get rid of draw arrays, just entirely. We're not going to be using it anymore because, well, we're not drawing this giant array of vertices anymore. We're using this array of indices. And this should be GL element array buffer, not GL array buffer. So, yeah. The way we actually use our IPO is actually pretty straightforward. We still need all this. It now knows about our vertex and it knows about the VPO. So now I'm going to bind buffer the geo element array buffer IBO and just geo draw elements. And that should draw all these vertices in the VBO with our IBO. So, first off, what data? First, just like the geo array methods, first thing we specify is what how we want to draw it. And I want to draw them as triangles. Next up is size, which I'm going to use the same variable for, but since we aren't drawing it in terms of vertex length, I'm going to change that to index length now. It just makes a little bit more sense. Next is what type of data are the indices? And I'm using GL unsigned integers, so that should be fine right there. And lastly is the offset that we want to start at, but I really don't want to start at the offset, I just want to start at the beginning, so I'm going to specify zero. And there you go, that completes the draw method. So let's go over to the game class and let's start using this. First off, as you see, I already changed the name vertex array to vertices off camera. So, sorry, I know I'm horrible, I do so many things off camera. And yeah, we're going to expand our add vertices call to use the indices. And I'm going to create an int array for these indices. So, new int array. And start off with, I'm just going to specify the, I guess, the null way of doing it. Just go, go in and specify 0, 1, 2, 1, 2, yeah. Just draw the vertices in the order they're in. And in theory, this should give us the same thing we had before, so let's see what happens. And there you go. So we can do the exact same thing as before with our indices now. So, now that we have that, let's expand. Let's use this to draw something that we don't... we didn't already... well, I should say we couldn't draw easily with just vertices. How about that? Now, I was gonna go for a cube, but I'm running a little bit low on time, so I'm just going to go for a 3D pyramid, because it only involves one extra vertex. So I'm gonna create a new vertex, at position oh, 0, negative 1, 1. So one unit in the z-axis. And that's going to be our final vertex. So now to actually draw it, I'm... what? Oh. <laughs> I'm going to start by drawing z vertex 0, 1, and 3. And I'm going to go down. So I'm just going to forego that first triangle for a bit and go straight for the... Straight, straight for using our new vertex, if that makes any sense. So then, I'm going to keep drawing from that point, so I'm going to draw 3, back to 1, and so I don't draw the same triangle, I'm going to go up to the vertex 2, right here. And I'm not... If you really want to know exactly how this is visualized and such, you can draw it out on paper. I'm just sort of, you know, going through. And 2, 1, 0. So again, going through here, going back to vertex 1, then back to zero. So that draws most of the triangle, or pyramid. Just need one more. Zero, two, and three. I'm pretty sure. Now if I didn't draw it backwards, I should get something that still looks like a triangle on screen, but you'll notice the difference. Aha! So, as you can see, it's starting to work a little bit. We're starting to get a little bit of 3D going on. So, let's go ahead and let's... Okay, screw that. Let's avoid the obnoxiously large text box and try to find the update method. There we go. And let's make a rotation around the y-axis as well. Let's see what happens. Hey! There you go. So now we have 3D rotation going on. 
Actually, it might be a little more clear if I turn this off, so let's do that. And yeah, we now have a 3D rotating pyramid, which inverts itself. So, pretty cool. And yeah, and of course, we didn't actually have to reuse any of the vertices because we now have index buffers, and they can, they can allow us to represent faces. So yeah, there you go. That's our 3D pyramid. And just to give you a little bit of a better look, I suppose I can go ahead and disable the scaling. So yeah, now it should be rotating back and forth across the screen. Excellent. Yeah, there you go. So, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and I'll see you next time, where we will... We might actually start loading meshes in from external programs, so if you like Blender or Maya or 3ds Max or whatever your preferred modeling program is, you should be able to just create your big fancy piece of mesh in there, and then save it in some file, and our engine should be able to load it in. And yeah, so that's hopefully going to be our next goal, unless I forgot something. So yeah, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and see you next time.